first of all, Mr. President, thank you very much thank for this you. exclusive interview. First, mm -hmm. I guess, to any Arab or international media. We here in Michigan, I talked to many voters in the swing states, including here, Arab Americans said they support you on the economy, right. but they want you to stop the war in Gaza and Lebanon. Thousands of civilians are dead, including 70% in Gaza are women and children. If you reach the White House, how are you going to stop this war? Well, I want to see it all stop. I want to see the Middle East get back to peace and real peace, but a peace that's going to be a lasting peace. And that's going to happen. I have, I feel really, truly confident uh, it's going to happen. And I believe it's going to happen soon. And we'll see what happens with the election. I think the election is going to make a big difference. But I was respected over there and uh, great relationships with so many, including your friend and uh, my friend. But we have great relationships and uh, we're going to get it done and it's going to get done properly. But you want a lasting peace. You don't want this to go on every five years, every two years, every 10 years. You want to have a lasting peace and we're going to get that done. Do you believe now with the killing of the Hamas leader and Hezbollah leader, there is a chance for negotiation? I do. I think they've even suggested it and not from strength. They've suggested it. But, you know, interestingly, I've spoken to people from Lebanon and they wanted to go as far as I was very actually surprised. Talking about Hezbollah. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. Hezbollah. And uh, they were brutal. I was really surprised. Last night I went to the big Catholic dinner, the Al Smith dinner, right? And people came up from Lebanon, Lebanese people, great people. And uh, I, maybe some were from America, but I think probably ultimately they just love that country. And, but a million people have been forced to leave their homes. Yes. Thousands have been killed. And they really believe, some people believe you the only person who can stop this war because I think you're right. Prime Minister Netanyahu listens to you. Yeah, he does listen to me. And uh, I have a call with him tomorrow. Now, I'm not the president right now. I hope to be soon, but we still have to win a race. We did very well uh, the second time. We won it the first time. We did much better the second time, but a lot of bad things took place. And uh, so, you know, it's so sad to think that if I were president, that war would have never started. You wouldn't have all those dead people, all those, you know, just demolished cities and areas. Uh, you wouldn't have had October 7th. That would be, that's the most important. You wouldn't have had that. And uh, all of the destruction and the hatred and everything else that followed October 7th. You wouldn't have had uh, Russia attacking Ukraine. Ukraine. Uh, you wouldn't have had inflation, frankly. And you wouldn't have had the horror, the most embarrassing moment in the history of our country, in my opinion. You wouldn't have had uh, the Taliban and Afghanistan and all of the things that are happening over there. So uh, that that moment in history was really one of the most embarrassing moments we've ever had. You wouldn't have had it. And I think that would have also kept Putin. I think Putin saw that and he said, they're a paper tiger. We're not a paper tiger at all. We're not a paper tiger. But he has no respect for Biden and he's got no respect for Kamala. And he went in and did a big, you know, look, the destruction and the death in Ukraine is incredible, far more than people think. Um, in 2017, on the first trip that you took on a foreign trip, you went to Saudi Arabia. Yes. And actually, I traveled with you I on did. that trip. How would you describe the relationship between the United States and Saudi Arabia? And what kind of role do you think they can play in a crisis in the Middle East? I, I think it's fine. Right now, it's, when, when I was president, it was great with capital letters, G-R-E-A-T, great. And so much respect for the king, so much respect for yeah. Mohammed, who's doing so great. I mean, he's really a visionary. He's done things that nobody else would have even thought about. His, his uh, very long city that he's building, he's, he's really doing something. He's a great guy. And uh, he's doing, he's respected all over the world. So uh, when you think, I mean, it, it, right now it's just okay, it's fine. Biden goes over there and he fist pumps. You don't fist pump. You go over there and you do it right. You shake a hand or something. You hug. You do. But uh, it could never be great with a guy like Biden. Could never be. I don't even think it would be good with Kamala. I don't think it would be good at all. But uh, with me, it will be great. And I have great respect for Saudi Arabia and for many of the other rulers over there, many of the other countries over there. Uh, don't forget, we did the Abraham Accords. It would have been chock full within a year. And I even think, and I, I make the statement, it sounds foolish, but it's not foolish. I think even Iran would have been in because Iran was desperate to make a deal. They had no money. 
And Biden allowed them to have $300 billion. They have now $300 billion, $350 billion. And uh, he allowed them back into the game. And uh, I would have done that, but no nuclear weapons. You can't have nuclear weapons. I can ask about these two points. First, on the Abraham Accord, will you expand it when you yeah. come to oh, the sure. White House? Everyone wants to be in it. They could have done it. I mean, all you need is an order clerk. Everybody wanted to go in. We would have had it. We would have had 12 to 15 countries within a period of, I mean, literally within a period of a year, I think, at the most. They have none. They added none. And everybody respects it. You know, they respect it so much. But look, the framework is there. All they have to do is be inserted. And that'll happen very quickly. If, if I win, that will be an absolute priority. Just getting everybody in. It's peace in the Middle East. We need it. And it's very important. And it'll happen. You've been tough on Iran. You took the decision to eliminate Qasem Soleimani. How are you going to stop Iran from acquiring nuclear uh, weapons? Well, I'd rather not say that to you, but they won't. They won't acquire it. Uh, now they may get it if you know if they get it very quickly. I'm not president, so I won't have much to do with that. And I have respect for Iran. I have respect for the people. I know a lot of Iranian people. They're very smart, actually great negotiators, great business people. They're great people. They're very warm people. I wanted to do as a country. I wanted to do great. Now it's in its own way is probably in danger. Maybe more so than they would have thought a month ago, right? With what's happening, I think it's in a lot of danger right now, which is, you know, very bad. I don't. I want. I don't want to see people killed. Everyone's being killed in the Middle East. I don't want to see that. But uh, no, I think we would have had something. I think we would have had something very special. We'll still have something, but so much damage has been done to the world whether it's Ukraine or whether it's uh, large sections of the Middle East. I mean, look at the death and destruction that's taken place. And none of this would have happened if I were president. What about the Israeli attack? They keep saying that Prime Minister Netanyahu wants to uh, hit Iran. Maybe not necessarily the nuclear facilities, maybe the oil facilities or elsewhere. Would you, would you support that if you were a president? Well, I think he's going to do what he wants to do, and I think he has to do that. You know, uh, Biden was giving him some very bad... Look, Biden has been historically horrible on foreign policy. Incompetent, I would say. What you do is anything he says, do the opposite, and you'll be brilliant if you do the opposite. But he gave him instructions not to do anything, and Israel was under great danger. They're under much less danger right now than they were one month ago, let's face it. I mean, you saw the attack on October 7th. That was horrible. I, I've seen tapes that other people haven't seen. And what, what happened there was horrible. That can't be allowed to happen. But if you think, that would have never happened. So the whole thing wouldn't have happened. That was the problem. And now still you have hostages, but many of them have been killed. And I'm sure many of them are dead. It's a very sad thing. What's going to happen when they find out that there are very few hostages, which is probably what they're going to find out. You actually told Hamas, you said you threatened them. You said you really, you have to release these hostages before I reach the White House. Yeah. So do you think what can be done? Well, I would have said the they have to release them immediately. I think if I said it, they would have done it. I think the hostages would have been back home. But I think even early on, I think a lot of those hostages were dead. I think they were dead. I mean, it's a very sad thing. It's not even believable when you think about it. But I think uh, pretty early on, there were a lot that were gone. And, uh, you know, just God rest their souls to live that way and to, you know, spend. And these were largely young people that were having a good time at a festival. Life was a bowl of cherries, right? And they're dead. It's, it's a very sad thing. But, I, you know, it's interesting. I, I don't know what's going to happen when they find out there are fewer than they thought. And it could be by, by a staggering number. What about the destruction and the death of civilians? Do you think that's tolerable price that Israel's doing in Gaza and in Lebanon now? Oh, the destruction's terrible. The whole, the whole thing is terrible. It should have, again, it should have never happened. If October 7th wouldn't happen, which it wouldn't have, because Iran funds it and Iran had no money. They had no money. They, they had absolutely no money. And I would have made a deal with them, and they wouldn't have done October 7th. But because they have no respect for Biden, they did it. And then it began. You know, that was like uh, just a terrible thing. But it began because of that, because of October 7th. You certainly can't blame Israel for hitting back, and they hit back hard, much harder than anybody would have thought. 
and then they send missiles in and they were all knocked down 187 missiles those missiles were knocked down and now everybody's waiting for israel to Retaliate. make a move i mean it's a bad it's, it's a, a bad mess. situation should have never happened talking about iran also i want to ask you about the houthis so the us and the uk has formed a military coalition do you think it's working? What would you have done differently if you were a president? Well, number one, uh, somebody's got to stop the ships from being shot out of the water. You have a lot of a lot of missiles are going right at ships and hitting them much worse than people know. You know, it's been pretty bad. Uh, you can't even use it. You can't even use it. That's your main travel lane. They can't use it. They have to find other ways. It's a very expensive and, and really not even doable. Uh, somebody has to make sure that doesn't happen. Absolutely. How do you see the U.S. Uh, role in the world? How U.S.? Can the U.S. How can the U.S. lead in the world? Do you you think have to respect the leader. So Viktor Orban, who's a very strong man and very respected, hungry. right, hungry, uh, he said, if Trump were here, none of this would have happened. He said it very strongly. He said it numerous times, actually. He said it six months ago. He said it two months ago at, you know, various uh, reporters and meetings. But he said, if Trump, and I understand exactly, look, when I was there, we had no terrorism. We had no wars other than I finished ISIS. I took care of ISIS was gone. It was supposed to take five years, maybe 10 years. And I did it in a couple of weeks. You ordered the killing of Baghdadi as well. Yeah, I get well, I did. Baghdadi, al-Baghdadi was uh, also, I said, you got to get him. He was trying to reform ISIS, but we knocked it out and we knocked it out, hopefully for good. But even that it can regrow if you don't have somebody in America that's strong. So many people are reliant on the United States. And with me, they have somebody they can rely on. With Biden, he doesn't know he's alive. Mm. And I want to ask you about domestic issue as well. Arab Americans I spoke to, they ally with you. And we had him today in uh, the mayor of Tram uh, Hamtramck. He said that we are closer to the Republican Party on social issues. Yeah. How do you see the the issue of transgender that pushed well, away Arab Americans from yeah, the Democrats? I, mean, I was with the mayor. I think the mayor is great. And uh, he's given us his total endorsement. We have a lot of Arab American endorsements, as you know, from different representing different countries, but Arab Americans. And uh, he's somebody I think he's got a lot of future in this country. Really, he's amazing. Uh, but yeah, he's not for men playing in women's sports. He's not for uh, transgender operations, the transformation or the transition into, you know, a male into a female. He's not into that. And I think for the most part, the Arab world isn't into that. And I'm not into that either. Um, but the radical left is totally into it. I mean, they'll actually take somebody from school without parental consent and do this operation. I, it's not even believable. Our country is really going bad. This is a very important election. I want to end on a personal note. Yes. You're going to become a grandfather soon. Congratulations yes, thank again. thank you very much. That's right. And your grandchild is going to be half Arab or Lebanese. That's true. I'm so happy about So how do you about feel that. about that? I'm happy about it. Okay, great. I have many friends who are Arab, as you say, but from different countries, but Arab. And uh, I'm very happy about this. They're smart. They're very warm people. It's a shame what's happening over there. Yeah. They're the warmest people. Michael's father so great. His mother so great. They're friends of mine. Michael's such a great young man. He's so great. He's such a smart guy. And they're going to have a baby, and I'm very happy about it. And so how are you going to make Lebanon safe for your daughter Tiffany, for your son-in-law Michael, and for Mr. Masad Boulos to go to Lebanon and to visit the ancestral Well, they will go. These are people that love Lebanon, number one, right? You know, Lebanon used to be known as uh, a place for great professionals, mm. greatest doctors, greatest engineers. I mean, they're really smart people, but it's been decimated by uh, some bad terrorists, let's face it. So hopefully peace will come to the Middle East. It's going to come to the Middle East and hopefully within my term. Hopefully I'm going to win and I'll bring peace. I'll work with Mohammed and I'll work with a lot of other people and we're going to bring peace. Uh, we did the Abraham Accords. Nobody thought that was even possible the four countries, and the four countries should be many countries right now, but Biden and uh, Kamala Harris didn't do anything. They sat there, stiffs, total stiffs. They have no idea what they're doing. But if I win, we're gonna have peace in the Middle East, and soon. Inshallah. Thank, Thank you, you so much, much, Mr. Thank President. Thank you very much, Thank and you. say hello to my friend.